All right, everybody, let's take a look at using TypeScript with React Navigation, specifically the Stack Navigator. I'm gonna be starting off this tutorial from a basic Expo project. All you have to do is start an Expo project with TypeScript. The one I'm using is from a similar tutorial where I just added a small logging hook. You don't have to use this one, uh, but if you decide to, it's available inside of my GitHub. That being said, let's jump right into it. So we're gonna install three packages. Now, if you are using Expo like I am, I'm going to be doing it through the expo install command. If you're not using expo, npm should work just fine. The first package I'm going to install, I'm going to do an expo install. I'm going to do at react-navigation forward slash native. This is the base React Navigation package that has all of the common utilities that the Stack Navigator and all the other navigators use together. Once you've installed the native package, we're going to do a similar expo install and we're going to do the at react dash navigation forward slash stack package. Finally, when that one's finished, you're going to install one more package and stack navigator requires an extra react native package. And we're going to be doing an expo install react dash native dash gesture dash handler. Sorry, that was a mouthful. Now, if you're using the project I started with, you'll have a source folder. If you don't just go ahead and create that, just make a new folder called SRC. And we're going to be creating two new folders inside of it. We're going to call them config and screens. And if you don't have the library folder, you're going to want to create that one as well. Inside of the library folder, we're going to create a new file called stackscreenprops.ts. Inside of it, we're going to be importing a couple things from React Navigation. So first, we're going to import from React Navigation Native. We're going to import two different things. We're going to import our param list base and we're going to import our root prop. Next, we're going to import from React Navigation Stack and that's going to be the Stack Navigation prop. Now, I'm going to be using these to help us fill out the props we're going to be passing into our function components. And I'll explain why we do that when we start creating those. So go ahead and export the interface, call it our iStack screen props. And we're going to have three things on this. We're going to have a name, that's a string. This is going to be a custom prop not provided by the stack navigator. We're going to have the navigation, which is going to be the stack navigation props with any inside the chevrons. And then finally, we're going to have our root and that's going to be a root prop and it's going to have two things passed into it. And that's going to be a param list based and any for now. Next inside the library, we're going to create something called a root prop. This is what we're going to use so we can elegantly map all of our screens in one place. So this is something we're creating on the side that we that we're adding to make things a little more efficient. Go ahead and import the iStack screen props. Now we're going to export the interface iRoute prop and it's going to have two things on it. It's going to have the name of the screen and the component. So first let's make the component key. That's going to be react function component with our stack screen props. And secondly, the name is just going to be a string. This name is not the same name that's inside of our function component. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to go to the screens folder and we're going to create a file called home.tsx. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this from our app.tsx file and just change a couple things. First, I'm going to fix our use logging import. It's just from back one folder and the hooks folder. If you're not using my base project, just ignore this. You're going to just be using a console.log anywhere I'm using logging. We're going to change the export default function application to look more like a function component that I create in other tutorials. So how we're going to do that is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna erase this line here and we're gonna type in a const home screen and that's gonna be of type react function component. You're gonna pass in your iStack screen props just like we did in that uh, root props and pass the props. Next, I'm gonna load up the variables from the props being passed in and that's gonna be navigation, that's going to be route and I'm gonna make that equal to props Next, I'm going to change this logging in this use effect here to reflect what's in my navigation and what's in my route. I just want to see what's going on here. Now, actually, I'm going to add the name as well. So again, if you don't have the use effect here, go ahead and add one in and just do this with a console log. Next, I'm going to change this text just to say home screen, nice and simple. And that's all we're going to really do for our homepage for now. Lastly, we're going to export default home screen. 
And then once we do that, we're going to make a new file in our config folder and we're going to call it routes.ts. So we're going to put all our routes in a list here. We're going to make a new variable called const routes and it's going to be of the type iRoute props. It's going to be an array. And inside the array, we're going to add an item. We're going to name it home and we're going to pass in the component the home screen. Next, we're going to export default our routes so we can use them on our app.tsx file and create our stack navigation. So at the top of the file, we're going to import our React native gesture handler. We're just going to throw that in the top just as a straight import without using a variable. Next, we're going to create a const stack is equal to create stack navigator imported from React navigation stack. And now we can go ahead and edit our view to reflect our stack navigation. So I'm going to get rid of the style sheet because we don't need it. And inside of our return, I'm going to put a navigation container. Inside of this, I'm going to import our stack and I'm going to be doing that by typing stack dot navigator. And I'm going to give it the initial route name of home, meaning that the home screen is going to always be the top of the stack. Now, this is where I'm going to map in all of our routes that we have in our config file. If you don't want to use a map, let's say your app only has three, three routes, you don't really need to make those iRoute props that I made and make that routes config file. But I like to do this just in case my application grows. So inside of this, we're going to input some parentheses and we're going to do our routes.map. And inside of it, we're going to create a stack screen and we're gonna pass it a key as whenever you map JSX, you need a key. The name is going to be our r.name and our component is gonna be our r.component. Now, that name that I'm passing in is the actual name of the route, which is going to match up with that initial route name. It's not that name prop we created in the stack screen props. So I'm gonna show you actually how to pass props into it, custom props that are other than the navigation and the route. So how we're going to do that is instead of closing off our stack screen here, I'm going to remove the forward slash here and I'm going to make a separate close off so that I can pass in some children. Inside of it, we're going to put in some parentheses and there's going to be a function with the props and it's going to point to our component that we're going to pass in. So here I'm going to do my r.component and you're going to see an error here because I didn't actually pass in the props that I need. It's saying it's missing the name, navigation and route. So the name here is the prop, the custom prop I wanted to put in. So let's take a look at how to do this. You're going to do a name is equal to r.name because it's going to be the same. And here I can do a, a spread operator and then the props to get my route and navigation. So it's pretty simple. Next, I'm going to run expo start and I'm going to do a little testing here to see what happens. So if I run in the web browser and I take a look at the console and inspect, we're going to see that I have the name being passed in, the navigation, and the route props. Now that name, again, isn't the same name that React Navigation is using, so maybe we should actually change the name of it so you understand it a little bit better. So I'm just going to go back to my stack screen props definition, change this to name prop, and then I'm going to change it in my definition in my app.tsx. And if I hit refresh, then you're going to see that it's actually undefined, and that's because we haven't changed it in the home screen itself. So if we go back to the home screen, you'll see that it's actually still trying to rename. So let's change that to name prop. And then when I save it and I hit refresh, you'll see that the name prop is now popping up properly. So the actual name definition is inside the route, inside React Navigation. So that name prop can be any prop you want to pass in to your screens. Now that we've created our first screen, let's go ahead and create a couple more so that we can actually navigate between them and you can see the stack in action. So I'm going to copy and paste my home.tsx file in screens. I'm going to make two more files and I'm going to name one of them about and one of them contact, let's just say, just to have a couple different names. Inside of the home screen, I'm going to add two buttons and they're going to be from React Native. They're going to have, the first one's going to be of the title about, it's going to have an on press and then it's gonna have a function and that function is gonna be calling our navigation prop, which we have already defined, dot navigate. And inside of it, you wanna pass the name of the page you wanna to go to. So we're gonna do about, and then I'm gonna copy and paste this and do the same thing for contact. 
And now that I've done this, I'm going to copy and paste everything inside this file. Even though I already copied the files, I forgot to add these buttons. So I'm going to copy and paste everything here, and then I'm going to go to my contact file. I'm going to rename everything that says home screen to contact screen. And then I'm going to change the button that navigates to contact uh, to the home screen. And then once I do this, I'm going to do the exact same thing in my about screen to make sure that it links to the other two screens as well. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit here and make sure that you change the background colors of the screens as well so that you can see yourself navigate between them. Now that I finished it with my about screen, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my config routes file and I'm gonna add my about and contact to my routes definition here. And I'm gonna just make sure I change the names about and then I change this to the about screen, change the other one to my contact screen. And then that should be everything. So let's go ahead and test this one more time. So after I call expo start, I'm going to go and I'm going to see that I can't have multiple screens here. That's because I forgot to rename the contact screen inside of my routes config file. So let's go back to that config file really fast. Let's go ahead and change the name to contact. And now everything should work fine. And now you can see that everything loads properly. So I'm going to resize this so it looks more like a mobile device. And you're going to see the Console log at the bottom, as I switch the screens, you're gonna see the screens change. You're gonna see the title at the top change. You're gonna see a back button at the top now next to about, same thing with contact. So if you hit that back button up there, it'll take you back through the stack. And let's just play around with this a little bit here. So I click back twice and then I'm at the top of the stack on the home page. Now with, this, with navigators, obviously one page will always have to be open. So in this case, it's gonna be the home page. If I click contact, you'll see that contact and then the about page load at the bottom. But when I go back to the home screen, since it's sitting at the top of the stack there, it's not refreshing. It's just a little nuance for you to think about when you're navigating with Stack Navigator. Now I have my Android simulator running as well on my Android virtual device. And I'm just gonna test it here again, just to make sure that it everything's working properly. And it looks a little bit cleaner on the Android simulator as this is what it's gonna look like on your phone. And there you have it guys, there's a quick guide to getting Stack Navigator working inside of your React Native project, specifically if you're using Expo. The steps to do it in a non-Expo project are essentially the same, minus the install, and minus the build after you've completed all your code, but that's pretty much how it goes. All right guys, thanks for mu so much for tuning back in and we'll see you in the next one.